I'm sure really you find awesome. your mom is, uh, or tell us about your mom, Bob. Now. Oh my God, she's right here. Yeah. Very Hi, mom. To talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's not talk about her right now. <laughs> oh, highly sensitive and emotional, yes. <laughs> she can talk in code. She's got her <laughs> <laughs> she can still hear me. <laughs> All senses, six, seven, ten. I don't know how many. Yeah, oh. so. <laughs> all the all the Claire's, as they say. <laughs> so I oh, bet yeah. you you've been really. You do you find that you need to calm your mom down? Do you find oh, all that the time. Her, her thinking is is closed? Do you find All that she has a lot of anxiety and that she oh. leads with a lot of fear? Her and, mom was the go, 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 go. Right? And, and oh, the worker no. can't no. sit in that uncertainty. It's more on the lines of what will, what will other people think of this? Mm -hmm. And that works all the time. All the time. And um, that was the main difference because Dad and I prescribed to uh, a different kind of thought, and we tried to, you know, it was it was a different energy there because we we never cared as long as we were on the right path and as long as we thought and did right, uh, we never really bothered. And I, I'm still like that, and that's not the case with my mom. Um, it's, it's very difficult because she's highly sensitive and very very emotional. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, yeah. And the yeah. one thing was like I'd ask him a question, and he'd go, "Who's who wants to know?" Mm. <laughs> like what does it matter right well and i am uh uh yes i am mm -hmm. a highly sensitive person myself and mm -hmm. i was very emotional as a teenager and my mom didn't know how to handle me i didn't know how to handle me <laughs> right. right i mean i just acted out because i was resisting what everyone was trying to shove down my throat about who i should be and well i've talked to you linda i grew up in a blended family as well and so i my mom just well i lost my voice and um you know it's taken me it's taken me many years to claw myself out of that right right but now here i am raising a highly sensitive child who has a lot of emotional reactions and whoa those beginning years with my kids yeah i did not knock it out of the park um it's taken me until now and certainly doing that self-work to recognize how i was repeating a pattern oh. and yeah, right? I totally get that. I, uh, I was leading with fear and I was trying to shove it down my kids' throats, even though from a soul level, I didn't agree with it. Right. But I was getting, you know, you get that vibration, right? I was talking about earlier from the world and they look right. at you and they judge you and they question your thinking. And if you're not strong enough, if you haven't built up that inner resilience, right. oh my gosh, it'll just eat you up. Or that was my journey. Oh, it's kind of in a way very similar because I've gone through very similar stuff. Um, voices differ a little bit because I couldn't express. I didn't really know. It's only after I, um, after I had a kid that I started standing up because I did not want to make the same mistakes that I was yeah. Yeah. and I started standing out, standing up for myself and, and others more and more and more. It was not a conscious decision. I just became like that. And it was more of a protective mm -hmm. instinct maybe. I don't know. And um, yeah, I, I, these days I'm more conscious of what I'm doing because um, I've listened enough and I guess I, I get a fair chance at my life the way I want it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I remember being in my 30s and watching a, another girl kind of like process through like her parents and stuff and it was like the 30s are 
it's a really painful time because you need a mother, but you don't have a mother because you basically you're seeing all the things that are wrong with your mother, all the patterns, all the whatever that isn't true that you really feel you, you, you want to break them because you don't want to pass them on. You're just so generationally conscious and yeah, all, like all of my 30s just felt super, super painful. And then <clears throat> when I went into menopause, I have a chapter in the book, Menopause Mavens. Um, and I said, well, I'm having trouble with menopause. I don't know why I'd be in your compilation book. And <laughs> Jane was like, well, the, you know, in getting to know you, you, you have like two stories in, in your life and like they're coming up now in menopause in because you shared them with me and I'm like, all right, so fine. You know, so I, I did my chapter. None of us knew um, what the other was writing. It was totally out of ego um, compilation book and it blew my ass away to get my copy and <laughs> see that the opening story, the, um, this other gal that she wrote it with were kind of like the lead authors and then the contributing authors because they called each other and it's like, you're going to believe this. You're sitting down. I'm in menopause. Me too. You know, and now what do we do? Right? <laughs> and so then they got health coaches and different people with different stories together for the book. Anyways, the other gal we knew from like high end coaching, she, um, she, her story opens the book with a knock on the door and it's a coroner telling her her husband's committed suicide. Mm. And I'm like, what? Because my story, which was put second to the last in the book, so we didn't have to end with the depressing story, um, was was getting a knock on the door. I'm over babysitting, and my uncle's there. And my uncle's like, he never comes over. Like, what the heck? And two two janitorial cars. Conclico was the company that my grandfather built, and my dad worked for, and my uncle worked for. And they were out front of our house. I was like, and he goes, your grandpa's over. He'd like to talk to you. He's talking to your mom and your brother right now. And, you know, you need to go home. And I'm like, well, but I'm babysitting. He goes, oh, I'll watch the kids. And then that was really creeping me out. I was like, what? So, yeah. So that's how my story opens. And so I lost I my father's that. suicide and I lost my dance career, supposedly, you know, a few months later in a gymnastics accident. Yeah, it was, it was, it's a good book. It, it has a lot of helpful tips for menopause as well, but. Wow. Yeah, it's just interesting. And then in your 40s, you won't listen to anybody. You're like 18 <laughs> again, you know, like, you know it all. And you've listened to people and it didn't work anyways. And it just, it's a it's a funny era that way too. <laughs> so. Well, just to take it back to even when I was raising my kids, um, I had at the time my grandmother was alive, my mom, and then me with my child. And the resistance was uh, growing as they would watch me parent my child, my first child, and I had a tendency not to put him down. And that was very taboo in my family. And as a matter of fact, they look, both my mom and my grandmother would, would, they flat out ask me, what are you doing, Jennifer? Your baby's not crying. Why are you holding your baby? If your baby's mm. not crying, your baby mm. should be either on the floor or in a car seat where they're safe. If, for an example, I would bring the car seat up with me when I went to visit. And instead, I always had my child with me and cuddling and unless they were sleeping. And, and it did take me, I know I overparented in the beginning. It took me some time. I, I'm not professing I did everything correct or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that was really difficult at a time when I wanted my mom, right, Linda, I'm in my 30s. I kind of want my mom for that nurturing. I'm going into this mother. Like, I am doing it right, aren't I, mom? Right. And then I get <laughs> met with that. Not to mention, I decided to nurse my children. That was so taboo in my family. I mean, I just so really, I wow. had a very different, yeah, it was just really different. And as a matter of fact, I got into it with my mom. I was 
probably facing postpartum depression. Um, and my I mom, right, I was reaching out to her and crying and letting her know that I wasn't doing okay. And do you know, she said to me in her cold way that she does, you know, Jenna, I don't know. I've had my kids already. I'm done. You're going to have to figure this out. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I went for some serious counseling after that. <laughs> yeah. Serious. Got myself to a position where, you know, I had to, I had to learn how to let that go. Right. Yeah. That was difficult. Yeah. And Very. So we, you're right. It's a lot of it is the conditioning that we get. You know, my tagline about shattering those limiting beliefs, because let me tell you, I have suffered in silence. Yeah. Right? right. A long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I love good. your copy. Yeah, well, you You'll know, be. it's been, it's working with Linda and Bhavna, this community that allows me to be me and to have yeah. deeper discussions and yeah. so that I can get more aligned with my truth. Yeah.